Hey, what's up guys? So today we're going to be basically fixing the ticking noise that's coming from my Dodge Ram Hemi. Um, so these are notorious for snapping the head studs, either clean at the block or a little bit down the manifold. So I'm going to go ahead and pop that manifold off. It's actually leaking from the driver's side on mine. Uh, I'm going to show you a quick clip of it and what this ticking sound sounds like. Basically when you first start the truck up, you hear the ticking for a little bit. Once it heats up a little bit, I guess everything expands a bit and it seals up that gap. So. Um, listen to the video, you'll hear that slight ticking noise that I'm talking about, and then we'll go ahead and rip the wheel off, take the fender liner off, and get in there. Okay, so first go ahead and pull off the wheel. Okay, the wheel's off now, so next, um, it's not essential, but it is a lot nicer to take the inner fender off, so there's not much holding on. You can see it's pretty much just dangling here, so we got some screws, looks like 8 mil fasteners, and some speed clips around the perimeter here. So let's go ahead and pull this liner. Basically, you have some screws here, screw here, screw here. And then, like I said, some speed clips along the bottom. So let's go ahead and pull this, and then uh, we'll get into the actual manifold. First we're gonna remove the heat shield, so there's four 10 millimeter nuts holding on, so one here, one here, one on the bottom down here, and the last one right here. So let's go ahead and remove those. So I just wanna show you guys, we're not even into this very far, we can already find out where the culprit is. So if you see here, I went to take off this 10 millimeter nut, and basically, it is tight to the shield, but it's snapped off inside, so I can't even really remove this 10 millimeter nut. So this one we don't have to remove, we'll just take it off with the shield, but basically you can see this one's the one that's already snapped, so. You will have to remove the dipstick tube, so there's a 10 millimeter bolt, which you should be able to see right here. And basically you remove that 10 millimeter bolt, and you can get out the dipstick tube. So just finagle the dipstick tube, you're going to have to take the dipstick out of the tube um, quite a ways just to be able to clear what's in the pan. So pull the dipstick out of the tube and then the whole thing basically you can finagle it through here. Just move the parking brake cable a little bit and it'll slide out through the bottom. So now this heat shield is ready to come off, so we should be able to get this off. A bit of persuasion here. It's a little bit difficult on this side because this, there's two studs that are snapped clean off that are extended out here. Okay, so the heat shield is out and there's the culprit. So here's the two studs that are snapped clean off. Uh, this one looks like it should be pretty easy to get out, hopefully. Or actually, this one just came clean out, so there's only one snap stud at this point. This one just threaded itself out of the block, but we're going to replace it anyways. So hopefully this one's not snapped too far in and we can grab a hold of it, but we'll see once we get this man pulled out of the way. Next up, we're going to put a bit of PB Blaster on these two um, exhaust bolts. So these are what are connecting the manifold to the catalytic converter. So just to play it safe, they don't look too bad, but... Um, I don't want to snap them either because you don't necessarily have to replace these. So I'm going to put a bit on here. And then they are 14 millimeter head bolts. So 14 millimeter head bolts, we can take these off. Next step is to go ahead and remove all the bolts um, that are remaining that may have not been snapped off or whatnot. So the ones with the studs are going to be 13 millimeter head bolt. And the ones um, that are don't have a heat shield mounting point on them, they're the 10 mil. So go ahead and remove all those and then this manifold should pop. Yeah. 
So the bolts are all now removed. So we can go ahead and get this manifold out of here. Let's get this heat shield out of the way. Or, sorry, heat shield slash gasket. Drop it at the bottom. Manifold it out of the way. And basically, you don't necessarily have to take this out, but just get it out of your way so you can get to the stud here. So I'm going to take it out this way, it looks like. Okay, so this is what it's going to look like. So after you're done drilling the very center, so make sure you're centered on the actual stud, but you're going to drill out the smallest hole and then you're going to put the extractor in like so. Um, so this one's actually started to catch. So um, I probably drilled in, like I said, about a quarter of an inch um, to get enough bite. And then I put the extractor in here and now the I turned it counterclockwise and the stud is seems to be cooperating. So it does seem to be coming out. So let's continue and hopefully turn this thing out without too much hassle. Moving on to the passenger side, let's go ahead and take off the wheel, take out the fender liner, and we'll get in there. So here's what the manifold looks like with the fender liner all uh, removed. Basically, I think there's a lot more room to work here, so I think this side should be better as far as uh, being able to get in here because you don't have the steering column running through. We don't have to remove the dipstick, any of that stuff. So. Let's go ahead and start removing some of the stuff. So let's remove the 14 mil bolts that are holding on the exhaust of the cats, or the manifold of the cats, I should say. And then the 10 mil bolts holding the heat shield on, and you know, same as the other side. So the 13 mil bolts are studs that are basically holding the manifold on. So let's go ahead and just rip through this stuff. Alright, so on the passenger side here we have all the bolts removed and the manifold and the gasket. Um, but basically none of these bolts were snapped on this side, but since the other ones were already broken, or at least one was broken, it's only a matter of time before these ones go too. So I'm replacing these bolts at the same time. I got all OEM Mopar hardware, so we're going to go ahead and put in that OEM stuff and let's go ahead. Also this is in a certain sequence, so this is a sequence that you're going to want to be tightening them in. Um, just basically following the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, and so on. Um, there's a bolt that's going to be at the end. It's not going to be uh, doing a whole lot, but basically, yeah, you want that one as well. So let's go ahead and put that stuff together. So you can use um, these two spots basically to hold your gasket in place and then hang the manifold on top. So it's going to be this one and also this one here basically instead of trying to fiddle with everything you can put these two in place or hold the gasket grab your manifold lay it on that end peg and then drop it down on this one here on the bottom So with every bolt in place, basically you're going to have the stud bolts on the outside. So this is going to be a stud, this is going to be a stud, this one's going to be a stud, and then the one below here on this cylinder is also going to be a stud. And then these four in the middle are just bolts, and then this extra one on the end is also a bolt. So let's go ahead and tighten them in that sequence that I showed you right here. Next you'll want to get a torque wrench and set it to 18 foot-pounds of torque, or if yours is in inch-pounds. You're gonna multiply that 18 by 12, and that's gonna give you 216 foot pounds or inch pounds of torque. So set that and then follow in that sequence. Put these bolts all tight on the manifold. I'm gonna go ahead and install the bolts that hold on the uh, rest of the exhaust system, which are 14 mil head. So let's get those two in and tightened up. Next, we'll go ahead and install our heat shield and put on these 10 mil head nuts which are 11 foot-pounds or 132 uh, inch-pounds. 
Okay, everything's now tight on the passenger side, all the bolts and hardware. We can go ahead and put this fender liner in and then move on to the driver's side. Fender liner is installed on the driver's side. Back on the driver's side, so moral of the story is um, with that extractor bit that I was using, um, two things. One, I should have known better. I've had other bits. Actually, at this house, I don't have the extractor bits that I have in my other house back home because I have a lot more tools there, but making do with what I had. And uh, I went to Harbor Freight and got the extractor bit uh, kit from there, which again, should have known better, but basically I drilled the pilot, uh, put the extractor bit in there and it snapped. So that snapped and when that snapped, it was stuck in there. I tried to drill it out with um, some drill bits, bought it the best drill bits I could, still couldn't drill out the extractor. So I ended up having to pay a guy to come out that basically is specialized in that. And he had, you know, bits that, I don't know where he gets them from, from another planet, but bits that can actually drill through the, <coughs> the extractor itself. So he got that out. Threads aren't damaged, uh, still original threads and have to Healy coil or time inserted or anything like that. So that one's out, but I recommend if you're gonna do the extractor, two things. One, you buy a decent set of extractor bits, or bits, which is obvious, but also try to go as big as you can to grab on that. Because another thing I did do was I tried to just wing it and go a little bit quicker than I probably should have. And I used a small extractor bit um, so that probably didn't help matters that it snapped either because if I had to take my time, drilled it out a little bit bigger so that I had more bite on it, um, the next size up extractor bit probably wouldn't have snapped. So anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead and get the manifold gasket and manifold back on this side and get it buttoned up. Same sequence on this side, or a different bolt sequence, but um, same thing. We're going to put the uh, gasket on first and we're going to hang it with the bolt on the end. Similar to the passenger side, um, the driver side is going to have the same um, bolts in the middle here. So you're going to have four bolts in the middle. These two are going to be the stud version, and these two are also be the stud version. So let's snug these up a little bit, at least suck this manifold in a bit, and then we'll go ahead and tighten them in the sequence. So this is the torque sequence that we're going to follow. Um, this torque sequence is similar to the other side, but basically you're just going to follow one through eight, and that's the way we're going to torque them. So let's go ahead and follow that sequence. Next we'll install our bolts in the back here that hold the manifold onto the rest of the exhaust. Next we'll install the heat shield with the four 10 millimeter head nuts. Nut, we're gonna wanna get the slip stick routed because that's one of the mounting points for it. So I put it in from the bottom, just kind of finagling it through here. Once you're done wrestling this uh, dipstick tube in place, you can go ahead and put your 10 mil head bolt in uh, on the dipstick tube, and then you can finish off by putting this 10 mil nut back on. So we're gonna go ahead and torque all these 10 mil head nuts to 11 foot pounds, and then this should be complete. All right, so thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed that video. Um, so basically, I'm just gonna say that I would probably change out your manifold studs on a Hemi pickup truck, at least, um, every 80,000 miles or so. Um, it seemed that mine, uh, obviously one of them snapped, um, and some of them were actually really loose, so there was some weird stuff going on there, and I'm not sure if it's just the heat and the expansion um, over time between the aluminum heads and those cast um, iron manifolds, if that's what's causing those to snap, but Either way, um, my passenger ones were good, but there was the ones right next to the cat, the ones to the rear most of the vehicle, those ones are really loose on both sides. One of them was snapped, so something's going on, but anyways, it seems to be common. My own 9 did it, and this vehicle did it as well, so this one's the newer one, uh, the latest gen um, as well. So basically, I would switch them out um, quite often, but I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Um, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. What we do here is go back, 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 back.